In this video, you'll see how to simplify operational change management with Change Manager. With this feature, you can manage changes across multiple accounts, automate change processes with templates, and avoid unintentional results using approvals and change calendars. Change Manager is a feature of AWS Systems Manager that simplifies the way you can request, approve, implement, and report on operational changes to your application configuration and infrastructure on AWS and on-premises. To get started, let's navigate to AWS Organizations to view our organizational structure. Our organization consists of a base organizational unit, or OU, called Enterprise. The Enterprise OU contains a child OU called SSM Management, as well as our management and member accounts. We are currently logged into the management account, which controls the organization. The SSM Management Child OU holds our delegated admin account. To use Change Manager, the delegated admin account must be registered as such in Systems Manager. For the purposes of this example, we have already done this. Let's go to Systems Manager to set up Change Manager in our organization. Since we've already registered our delegated admin account in Systems Manager, the delegated admin account field is pre-populated. Otherwise, we'd need to fill it in manually. Each Change Manager configuration we deploy creates a job function in our delegated administrator account, with permissions to request and execute changes in our specified OUs. Let's enter a name for the job function that the permissions will apply to. Here we can customize which AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, permissions this job function will grant. For our purposes, we'll provide full admin permissions. Change Manager can be set up for an entire organization or a specific set of OUs and regions. Let's specify our base OU and complete the setup. Change Manager is now set up. As part of the setup, Change Manager deploys several IAM roles to accounts in the organization. Let's take a look at them in the IAM Management Console. Several quick setup SSM roles have been created in the management account. Let's switch to the member account to inspect the roles there. A quick setup SSM change manager role with admin privileges has been added to the member account. Finally, let's switch to the delegated admin account to see the roles there. The same SSM change manager role has been set up in the delegated admin account as in the member account. Let's take a look at our user groups. For the purposes of this example, we have already set up several groups to perform tasks in the Change Manager workflow. The Template Approver group is responsible for reviewing and approving change templates. The Managers are responsible for approving change requests, and Directors are responsible for emergency approval of requests. In this case, each group has a single corresponding user named for their function. Let's return to Systems Manager to look at the Change Calendar which is responsible for allocating days on which change requests can and cannot be executed. Our change calendar is called Standard Weekend Maintenance because change requests are open on the weekends. Looking at the calendar, we can see recurring events beginning at 2 p.m. on Friday and ending at 2 p.m. on Sunday. We can add new one-off or recurring events as needed with the Create Event button. Next, let's configure our change manager settings in accordance with best practices. User identities can be managed with IAM or AWS Single Sign-On, or SSO. We'll use IAM. Amazon Simple Notification Service, or Amazon SNS topics, can be selected or created to notify change template reviewers about status changes. There are three main approval processes used in Change Manager. Template approval, change request approval during freeze events, and change approval in general. Here, we can set the IAM users, groups, and roles that we want to perform these functions. Finally, we can set various best practices parameters and optionally select a change calendar to restrict change events. We can also create or select an SNS topic for approvers for closed events. Let's create an SNS topic and save the settings. 
Now that we have SNS topics for template review events and closed event approval events, let's head to Amazon SNS to create subscriptions for the users who should be notified of the events. We'll notify the email of the template reviewer user whenever a template review event has taken place. Let's do the same for the emergency approval topic. Now that we've sent out the subscription confirmation invites, let's adjust the access policy of each so that only the topics themselves can push notification to their subscribers. Let's take note of the ARN of the topic so that we can edit it into the access policy. We'll specify the ARN here so that only this topic can push notifications to its subscribers. Now let's do the same for the other topic. Now that we've set up the SNS subscriptions and access policies, let's return to Change Manager to begin creating our first change template. We'll make a simple change template that will allow for easy creation of change requests involving the restarting or resizing of an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud or Amazon EC2 instance. Change requests perform their executions by drawing from Systems Manager Automation runbooks. Change templates can be of standard or emergency type. Emergency change templates bypass change calendar restrictions. We'll make a standard template. The template can include one specific runbook, a set of designated runbooks, or all runbooks. The purpose of our change template is to reboot or resize an EC2 instance, so let's select the most pertinent runbooks for those tasks. Different versions may optionally be specified for selected runbooks. In this case, we'll use the default versions. We can optionally provide a custom or guided description of the template in Markdown. In this case, let's move on. Enabling auto-approval allows users with the necessary IAM permissions to start the change request without requiring additional approval. Note that even if you enable auto-approvals, you must still specify at least one approval level for this template. For the purposes of this demonstration, We'll disable auto approval and manually specify approvers. We can specify up to five levels of approvers for change requests created from this template. These approvers can be specific to the request or to the template. Let's add a template specific first level approver consisting of our managers group. Additionally, an SNS topic can be created or selected to notify subscribers whenever a change request approval event occurs. Let's create one. Here we can create or select an SNS topic for change request events derived from our template. We'll provide the template reviewer SNS topic from earlier. Once a template has been created, it must be submitted for review so that template reviewers will be notified of it and can approve its use in change requests. Now that the template has been submitted, let's assume the role of a template reviewer who is an IAM user in the delegated admin account. Let's visit Change Manager to review the template creation request. Reviewers, like creators, can view a template's overall information, as well as the tasks it can perform through its selected runbooks, the change requests that have been derived from it, and its version history. Here we can see tasks that can be performed as part of the currently selected runbook. Each step runs sequentially from the previous one. We can also view the corresponding YAML code for the runbook. Let's approve the template. Approvers can provide comments regarding their decision. We have now taken the perspective of a user of the member account who is submitting a change request. 
we'll select the new change template. Next, we'll specify the name of the change request, the runbook to execute, and a description or rationale for the change request. We'll request to restart some EC2 instances in our account that have been acting slow while hosting a payroll application. We can schedule a workflow start time or run the operation as soon as possible after approval. In this case, we'll do the latter. Next, we must provide an IAM role that will be assumed in order to execute the runbook. The role must be able to run Systems Manager Automation runbooks. The execution may be deployed in either a single account or across accounts in one or more OUs. We'll specify the account number of the member account hosting the application. Rate control determines the maximum number of concurrent accounts on which to execute the request, and the maximum number of accounts on which the job can error before the process fails. Let's set both to 1. The target resource can be singular or multiple. For our purposes, we'll specify multiple EC2 instances by matching a tag key value pair. Again, we can specify rate control, this time for resource performance. Instead, let's move on. Let's review the change request and submit it. The submitted change request is now visible in the Requests tab of Change Manager. Let's switch to the perspective of the standard approver and approve it. For the purposes of this video, we'll skip ahead to when the change window is open. After a request is approved, its progress can be tracked on the timeline we saw earlier. Now let's switch to the perspective of the emergency approver and approve the pending change calendar override. We can review the SNS email notifications we've received since submitting the change request. The most recent notification says our request was successful. You've just seen how to simplify operational change management with Change Manager. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.